Hello everyone, time for another video. If this is your first time watching, welcome. Before I get into this video, if you haven't already, please hit that subscribe button, uh, that thumbs up, like this channel. Not only will you help support me, but you'll you know, basically give me motivation to make more of these videos. Um, I haven't made as many videos as I usually do. I know I always mention this. Getting back into it. Uh, I got a lot of things going on. Uh, a couple videos coming up. Anyway, this video... Don't expect uh, to get a lot of likes on this, only because it's um, it's a genre of uh, hard rock or metal that a lot of people don't like, which is new metal. Uh, but I think we're at that that age or year where new metal is kind of considered classic now, and some awesome throwbacks that we remember. Um, so you know, I I was in high school, late '90s, um, you know, into 2000, and this was the big music at the time. Uh, you know, grunge had died off. The alternative stuff just wasn't working. Uh, metal was just kind of, kind of a stalemate. Besides Pantera, uh, even Metallica went alternative. Megadeth was trying the same thing, with uh, you know, cryptic writings and Risk. And uh, at the same time, I was getting into classic metal uh, and classic hard rock, rock such as um, you know, AC/DC, Dio, things like that, and also. Uh, fully going into the whole Beatles and Rolling Stones catalog. But this was the music that was big at the time. Uh, I did enjoy it, I'm not gonna lie. I wasn't there for every band's album, so I'm only picking my personal favorite 25 albums, the ones I remember that I thought were pretty decent, that I really liked, and the ones that I could still throw on. And there's, you know, some cool jams on there. I mean, some of these albums, can't listen to all the way through anymore. But um, let's just get right into it. So this is my top 25 new metal albums. Coming number 25, band I saw at Ozfest 2001. This is Nonpoint with Statement, their debut album. Uh, really cool album. Uh, unfortunately, these guys are kind of uh, underrated. I mean, a really good band. They do have a good amount of albums out. And I, I feel like this is their best. I kind of like went back and listened to a couple of their other songs from their other albums, but I don't think anything touched on this. Uh, just the energy the songwriting and the playing they, they had on his first album was great. I mean, the song's Mind Trip itself, uh, Victim and Door, Back Up, What a Day was a minor hit for the band. Just really cool stuff on here. <clears throat> Excuse me. Coming in number 24, the sophomore album by Static X, Machine. Now, I know the Wisconsin Death Trip, the debut, uh, had a bigger impact, but this album, I feel like, is more... Um, I feel like their musicianship is really coming out in this one where I feel like the first one is a little more electronic poppy where this is more of kind of a prog metal sound. Uh, unfortunately, Wayne Static passed away. He's no longer with us. Uh, I saw the band is still touring and doing stuff. Not sure how they're doing it without Wayne. Uh, but the uh, the big hit off of this was Cold. Uh, not really a big hit, but the one hit song off of here. Okay, coming number 23, the debut album from Limp Bizkit. Uh, Limp Bizkit kind of making a comeback now. Uh, this is $3 bill, y'all. Uh, I feel like this is... Uh, I mean, this was the first, I feel, really rap new metal album. Uh, features the cover of George Michael's Faith, which was a big hit for the band. Uh, obviously, it does a little different. Um, kind of start moshing towards the end of it. Uh, Counterfeit's another decent song off of here. Not as good, I feel like, as the albums that would come after this, but still a uh, decent album for Limp Bizkit. Coming in at number, where are we at? Number 22. Life is Peachy, the sophomore album by Korn. Uh, Korn, you know, came out of nowhere with a truly distinctive sound that no one else really has. Uh, I feel like there's this, there's this band, uh, Chaos Fear, out now, I think, uh, that try to sound just like Korn. Not a terrible band, but... I feel like they gotta find their own sound. Uh, so it features a cover of Ice Cube's Wicked, <laughs> featuring um, Chino Marino from Deftones. Uh, Adidas was the kind of minor hit off of here. Another cover of War is a Lowrider, which features Head, the guitarist, on vocals. Okay, coming at number 21. It's the second album by Hev Seven Dust. This is Home. Uh, Seven Dust, a decent band. I was John Witherspoon, really a good lyricist and singer. The guys are still going strong today. 
Uh, didn't really step up, best of beat, excuse me. Uh, I feel like this was their most new metal of their albums, though. Uh, their debut album was also pretty metal, but um, I mean, this features Waffle and Denial, which I remember being on TRL a lot. And as you can see, I still have, don't know why I stuck it there. Uh, that is if this was my original copy, because a lot of this stuff was, you know, old and I kind of, you know, replaced it over the years. And now these CDs are a lot like two to three dollars each. Uh, but yeah, there you see the wall lifetime guarantee, but the wall without business. And well, they were now FYEs, but uh, yeah, don't think I'll get another copy of this. And funny thing, this is executive produced by JJ French of Twisted Sister. Coming in at number 20, sophomore album by Soulfly. Soulfly, obviously, the band that Max Cavalera formed after leaving Sepultura. Uh, this was a decent album. Uh, just Falls out, new metal. It's got the, the screaming on it. Uh, it's got a lot of guests, new metal stars on this, like uh, Corey Taylor from Slipknot. Fred Durst is on this. Um, I know John Lennon's son, Sean Lennon, is also on this. Uh, I always like the artwork for this one. I think it's really cool. Uh, yeah, it's really cool songs on this. It's got that Brazilian tribal beat with it also. That Max basically. Um, started with Sepultura's roots and you know cut left to form Soulfly which he fully went new metal with. Come on number 19, Stained Dysfunction. Uh, this is the major label debut but also the sophomore album from Stained. Um, the song Mud Shovel is awesome. I, I could still throw it on this day. I just when I'm in the car I just really turn it up loud. Uh, just Go Home, two other songs off of here. Wall is just all out and uh, yes this is just Stained at their, their heaviest. Uh, I know the next album, Break the Cycle, and it would have more, you know, alternative, you know, rock hits. But uh, this one is when they were definitely at their heaviest. Coming number 18, Mudvayne, LD50. Uh, Mudvayne recently got back together, but unfortunately, I don't think they they canceled their tour or something like that. Uh, Dig is just insane. I mean, these guys were face paint. Definitely different from Slipknot today. You know, Slipknot were the masks. Uh, nothing to gain. A song about a gain on here is great. Uh, Death Blooms is one of my favorite songs by Mudvayne. It's really, really good. Also, Prod on here is really decent. And coming at number seventeen, I dropped. But it's Volume Three: The Subliminal Verses by Slipknot. I know a lot of people think this is Slipknot's best album. I'm sure, a lot of people disagree with me having it at number seventeen. But I feel like their album's better than this. Uh, there are some decent songs on here. I just feel like it's too, um, I don't want to say poppy, but it's too radio friendly for me. Uh, uh, duality, I, I don't really need to hear that anymore. It's become like a meme now. <laughs> uh, Vermilion, Before I Forget is, you know, definitely just a radio song. I just like the uh, balls out, you know, Slipknot that would scare you to death when they first were, you know, coming out along that okay come on number 16 pod satellite this is the uh limited edition cd which comes with a dvd uh basically it's just some live stuff on there and uh behind the scenes of making of the album uh there's come some cool songs on this uh set it off is cool alive it's a big hit for on boom it was another hit youth in the nation was a huge hit i really like that song when it came out uh the song satellite also another one off of here um, after that, this is one of those albums that I can't listen to all the way through. Um, but all over, it's, it's decent. Uh, where are we at? We're at number 15, I believe. Debut album by Deftones, Adrenaline. Uh, again, uh, people might argue my point. This may be one of the first new metal albums ever released. And I, I could say this is probably the second new metal album ever released. Uh, the opening track, Board, is probably my favorite off of here. Nosebleed's decent. Engine number nine. Uh, kind of a weird cover, but I kind of always liked it. I like the, the colors on there. It's just really different. And from looking at the cover, you wouldn't think it would be as, you know, heavy and hard as it actually is. All right, what's, where are we at now? I'm losing count. All right, now we're on 14. 14, Limp Bizkit chocolate starfish and the hot dog flavored water um this may be like the pinnacle of new metal right here 
hot dog is kind of Fred Durst this to Trent Reznor of Nine Inch Nails. Uh, My Generation was the hit. My Way, huge hit. Uh, if anyone's a WWF fan or WWE now, but I was a WWF fan, don't really watch anymore. You know, My Way was um, basically WWF loved this album. My Way was the theme song for one of the WrestleManias. Uh, I think it was WrestleMania 17, I want to say. Uh, basically, The Rock for Stone Cold, and it was just huge. It was all over the place. Rollin', that was Undertaker's theme music at one time. Uh, Take a Look Around, it's from Mission Impossible 2 soundtrack. Or is it Mission Impossible 3? Whatever. Whatever one's a soundtrack that has, like, I Disappear from uh, Metallica on there. Alright, number 13. This... Debut album from System of a Down. Legendary. Um, another band where they kind of created this new own sound and no one else sounds like them. I mean, yeah, they get lumped in with new metal, which I do believe it is new metal, but it doesn't have all the elements of new metal, just their own sound. Uh, Sweet Pea, which opens it, is amazing. It just balls out like full on attack on your eardrums. No Sugar Suggestion, Spiders, The Devil, Soil, War, Mind, People, Hubert darts and pluck uh this is one of those albums that i can listen to all the way through uh as basically this is the the first one i'm showing here of all these new metal albums the first one i could listen to all the way through i'm sure i'll get more into that really decent album coming next issues by corn a lot of people didn't like this i think it's a very strong album by corn i believe this is the last decent album corn put out uh, I remember TRL on MTV, which they only play mu video, mu <coughs> video music. Mu <laughs> you know what I'm trying to say. They don't play music videos anymore. So this is... Um, basically, they had a fan contest for someone to draw the um, cover, and this was the winner. And I, I think this was my favorite of all of them. And inside, I'm going to roll out. There is the four finalists. Uh, I always did like this one the best, and then that one. And then going over, I thought this one's pretty cool. And this one, I just didn't get it. I don't know why it won. Um, yeah, pretty awesome to win that, though. But just really cool dark tracks on here. Course Falling Away From Me, uh, Make Me Bad, Somebody, Someone are the big hits off of this. But uh, this is a really dark album. I really like it. Uh, another one I can listen all the way through. All right, we're getting in now to the next one, number 11, Around the Fur, sophomore album by Deftones. Um, my, own Shumber, my Own Summer, Shove It. Great, great track. Um, still kills this day. Really heavy track. I love it. Uh, Be Quiet and Drive Far Away is actually the song that really turned me on to the Deftones. Um, basically the first song I heard by them. It was on some compilation or something way back in the like 97 or 98 and i was like wow i gotta check this band out sing the cover i mean as a uh prepubescent teenage boy you see that cover uh chick was hot so yeah i'm gonna buy this unfortunately there was no pictures over <laughs> inside uh i never really know what this girl looks like i mean kind of a camera angle looking down on her but yeah really cool album by death Tones. all right now we're getting into the top 10 and um yeah these top 10 are all albums that i can listen all the way through coming number 10 debut album by disturbed this is the sickness uh when this came out i loved it i remember uh, i was in high school um actually believe it or not i played football uh one year in high school and we listened to this in the locker room every day this was a new band that you know we saw at ozfest ozfest 2000 and uh yeah, man, it was it was amazing. Stupefy was the one hit they were pushing to this album on. And then Down With The Sickness really blew up like a year after this album came out. And uh, the other track I really liked off of here was the cover of Shout, which is a Tears For Fear song called Shout 2000. It was kind of funny. I was like, hey, mom, there's this new band. And uh, they do a cover of Shout, the Tears For Fear song. And I really like it. And kind of just trying to turn my mom onto his new music, <laughs> which I don't know if she fully got into it. Come number nine, Infest by Papa Roach. I believe this is their, not their debut album. I believe they have an album out before this, uh, self-released or, or on an indie label. But 
either way, this is their major label debut. Um, obviously, Last Resort was huge. It's still a big song to this day. Uh, I feel like it has a resurgence nowadays uh, with TikTok and the social media, things like that. Uh, just really cool. And for, I'm not like a, I'm not like a big rap fan, but I feel like, uh, well, he was named as, known as Kobe Dick back then instead of Jacoby Shaddix. Uh, the little raps he would put on certain songs like um, Broken Home, Dead Cell, Between Angels and Insects. I just thought they were so cool. I loved it. And yeah, I, I listen to this album. I could listen to this anytime. Throw it on. All right, coming in number eight. This is the huge album by Limp Bizkit that made them a household name and basically made them like the biggest band in the world at the time. Significant Other. Uh, Nookie obviously was huge. That was the one that really made blew them up. Um, you know, they were Woodstock 99. They, they were just huge. Uh, Break Stuff. Still a cool song. I don't care what anyone says. Um, the funny thing about Limp Bizkit is a lot of people hate them and they say shit about them but if you go to a Limp Bizkit concert no one's standing still I mean they're, they really get the crowd up to it so they they may not be great musicians but they are really good entertainers um, also I mean they went full on rap they even had Method Man guest with them on In Together Now and uh, the ones on No Sex Fred Durst actually sings on it and I, I always thought it was kind of cool I like the singing voice on that okay coming in at number seven the amazing debut album by Slipknot, self-titled. Uh, another band I saw at Ozfest, and I was like, "What is this? What? There's nine guys in Halloween masks, and they're all wearing matching jumpsuits. This is insane. What, what is this?" And they blew me away. And I bought this album. Uh, just turned it on. That you know, blast beat of sick that that started it off, and then Raiden the Eyeless. I mean, those two songs are amazing. In the Wait and Bleed, which was the uh, to kind of hit they push this album on uh surfacing spit it out i mean i've never heard anything like this before this was insane uh e even put it on this today today i just was like wow like this is so ahead of its time and nothing ever came close to this debut this is insane no one not saying no other um albums came close to this but <clears throat> nothing touches this in originality it's just crazy let me take a drink real quick <clears throat> Oh, excuse me. Come to number six, Follow the Leader. Um, the big album for Korn that really broke them through onto MTV uh, with Freak on a Leash. And, you know, that won all kind of different movie music awards and things like that. Um, video music awards, not movie music awards. Uh, Got the Life was the first single off of here, but Freak on a Leash was the one that really blew them up. Uh, again, full on rap on here. They have a duet with Ice Cube. Called Children of the Corn, uh, Dead Bodies Everywhere. The intro to that song I thought was always really cool. And there's also a uh, duet with Fred Durst called All in the Family. And Corn is actually the band that helped get Limp Biscuit signed. So you can blame Corn for that. For those who hate Limp Biscuit. All right, now we're getting to the top five. Top five is a band I really don't like, but I gotta admit, their debut album was really decent. Hybrid Theory by Linkin Park. Uh, I do not like anything Linkin Park has done after this. In fact, I don't consider myself a Linkin Park fan, but this album was just so different. Uh, I, I did, I've heard Encore plenty of times. I just don't like the album. Uh, I just feel like it's too radio friendly. This uh, One Step Closer was the song that came out. I hate that shut up when I'm talking to you thing. But besides that part, uh, they piqued my interest with the song. Um, with You is amazing. It's my, probably my favorite song by Linkin Park. Not that I really like a lot. Uh, Crawling, I can go without hearing again. Same thing with the end. But other stuff on here, like A Place in For My Head, Pushing Me Away, Paper Cut, Points of Authority. Really cool stuff. Okay, coming number four. White Pony by The Deftones. Uh, this, to me, this is my... Um, I kind of stopped listening to Deftones after this. I feel like this is their last really good album and... This is their best album, in my opinion. Uh, Back to School, a great uh, Digital Bath, Elite, Streetcar, Teenager, Knife Party is so cool. Uh, Passenger, which is actually features Manuel James Keenan from Tool and A Perfect Circle, and Pussifer and all these other bands. Uh, probably my favorite track off of this, and the guitar in there is just, chain, just awesome. Uh, Change in the House of Flies was the hit off of here. Again, got them on the TV. I feel like that was like MTV2's favorite video because once MTV2 launched, I feel like that video was always on. 
All right, coming number three. I remember buying this the day I came out. The day it came out at Circuit City. It's another throwback for you. Uh, yeah, so this isn't the original copy. This is a reissue. I, I don't know what happened to my original one, but the original one had like this silver mirror paper. I could still like remember the way it smelled. It smelled, and it was just like it folded out, and I was like, huh. Well, their debut album was like pretty amazing. Let's see what they're gonna follow it up with. I wasn't so sure, and they actually did a better album. Uh, it's it's harsher. It's it's rougher. It's heavier. Uh, it's it's got touches of I gotta say, it's touches of death metal on it. Uh, this is just extreme metal, extreme new metal here. People equal shit. Disaster piece. My plague. Everything ends. The heretic anthem. If you're five five five, I'm six six six. Genius. Uh, Left behind was the hit off of here that was amazing uh new abortion another decent song off of here great great album by slipknot still think they haven't beat that album all right now these last two were tough for me to pick um ultimately i did pick one over the other but coming number two toxicity by system of a down um huge huge album one of the greatest albums of all time in all genres in my in my opinion uh it's just so different it's so weird it's just amazing i it's just it, i don't know it just draws me in every time i love the artwork i love everything about it and it's it's a short album too it's, it's only about a half hour long but it, it gives you everything you need in that half hour a prison song needles deer dance jet pilot x chop suey obviously the song where everyone knew him it was on mtv all over the place um i remember people in school that didn't even listen to like hard rock and metal people listen to rap and you know um R&B and stuff like that like oh that band I like that band that Chop Suey song them guys are crazy hey found an audience with that uh, Bounce where he sings about his pogo stick but it's a cool song uh, obviously the title track Toxicity is amazing and Aerials which ends it is another hit off of here alright coming to number one uh, this was a little tough for me to choose between literally between Iowa Toxicity and this album uh, ultimately with this one because in my opinion it is the first ever new metal album and by the fathers of new metal and i'm sure everyone knows what i'm talking about right now the self-titled debut by corn i mean it's got the creepy photo there this is unlike anything that came before it uh it wasn't full-on metal it definitely grabbed the metal crowd um you got the alternative crowd going into it it just was totally different uh fieldy's bass was just added this different sound that no one's really heard before and I mean, you got these down to seven string guitars, just, just totally different. Uh, Blind, which opens it was a hit for them. That's, that's the one that, you know, kind of put them on the map of being corn. Although they really, really won't blow up until follow the leader. Uh, Ball tongue, need to clown, divine shoots and ladders, helm in the bush, daddy. Where the end of daddy, actually Jonathan Davis, the singer breaks down in tears because he's recalling a um, situation in his life uh, you know it's called daddy but it's actually about a babysitter molesting him and um basically he was raped by her but yeah this just set the tone for the darkness of new metal and everything that were to come and so so basically new metal is just these down tuned guitars um mixtures of alternative uh, metal and rap basically all together so Everyone, thanks for watching. If some of you uh, stuck through this whole video, list some of your favorite new metal albums. I know a lot of people aren't fans of new metal, but hey, I, I grew up in that time and I, I still dig some of these albums. And I'm not ashamed to say it. So everyone, put away those Jinko jeans, take off those uh, silver ball necklaces. And, uh... oh, let me show you something real quick. So those of you that want to check some of this stuff out i highly recommend these two albums i meant to pull these out earlier ozfest which was basically the tour that uh, everyone knows what ozfest is i'm going to get into it but basically it was to display the uh new metal bands at the time and kind of get them out there uh you know you're playing with ozzy so you're gonna get there so this one is ozfest live 2000 uh second stage live features bands like disturbed kitty uh, Queens of the Stone Age, Taproot, Soulfly, uh, Primer 55 is on here. So basically all these bands were unknown at the time. And it also features a second disc, which at the time was OzFest 95, I want to say, or 96. I'm going to say 90s, OzFest 96. 
uh, which was out of print at the time, but also it features bands for, which were unheard of at the time, Coal Chamber, Power Man 5000, Fear Factory, uh, Sepultura, ending it with Max Cavalier, and then also features Slayer on Earth, Angel of Death. And this one, which is pretty awesome too, this is the second millennium it's called, OzFest 2001 Live, I was actually at this show. Uh, basically, let me just read this, this lineup here. This is just new metal and metal at the time. So we got Black Sabbath doing The Wizard. They reunited, they were the headliners in the show. Marilyn Manson, Slipknot, Papa Roach, Linkin Park, Black Lobe Society, Disturbed, Mudvayne, Drowning Pool, Union Underground, OTEP, Nonpoint, Hatebreed, Systematic, Pure Rubbish, and American Head Charge. So obviously Black Sabbath, Manson, um, them guys are obviously known. Papa Roach was, you know, riding off the success of Infest. Same thing with Linkin Park and Disturbed. They're riding off the success of their debut albums. But all these other bands that are heard for the first time, including Drowning Pool, doing Bodies on here. So yeah, these are really cool live albums. So I recommend picking these up or, you know, I don't know if you can find these on Spotify or wherever. I don't really look on there. But if you can, check them out. It's definitely um, a cool reminder of the new metal days. And yeah, I mean, the songs that they picked on here are pretty decent. All right, everyone. Thanks again for watching. Uh, like, once again, if you haven't already, please hit that subscribe button. You help support my channel. And coming up next video, I'm pretty sure I want to do a follow-up to my 35 greatest prog rock albums. I had a good response on that. And I feel like I, there's way more than just 35. So I want to do a part two of that. So stay tuned. Hit that subscribe button. You'll get an update every time I post a video. Thanks again, everyone, for watching.